So look, don't click off this video for all those YouTube content creators that watch my content. If you have under 3,000 subscribers, I will give you a shout out on my next video and I will tell everybody to go check out your channel that watches my videos. Even if they don't, even if they don't comment, I'll tell them to check out your channel, give them information about it so they could go there and watch your content and they could support you, you know, subscribe. And um, I'm just trying to do this to give back to, you know, the people that follow me and, you know, subscribe to me. You know, I'm, just, I'm starting to get more comments from YouTubers that actually have channels. And I, I, I didn't realize it in the beginning, but they're like smaller YouTubers that are trying to get, you know, the subscriptions and trying to put their content out of there, so out there. So, you know, if you want to do that, comment below and I'm gonna go ahead and get started with my video. Good morning, YouTube. It's your lady, Steph. And um, first of all, I wanna thank God for giving me another day. Okay, and if you're alive today, I'm gonna need you to thank God as well. Um, today is Tuesday. I think it's the 13th. I always, I always forget the dates. As you all can see, I have a new mount for my car so now I can like make videos and vlog. Um, I'm on my way to physical therapy. Um, I do, <laughs> unfortunately I had to go back because um, they, my doctor actually um, requested that I, I go, I get 24 more sessions. Um, you know, it's a lot because I have to do physical therapy and I have a lot of appointments this month. I'm supposed to be going to get a mammogram on Friday. So I'm gonna do that. And then I have to see a gynecologist. Like I have to see so many doctors this month, like so many appointments, physical therapy all month. Um, I have to see my food addiction specialist every every Friday. She's not gonna, I can't see her this Friday though. Um, then I have my regular therapy. Like it's a lot of shit as you get older. You know, you constantly, have to get, you know what I'm saying, your checkups and shit. So you won't, so you can like know in advance of what's going on with your body, which is like very important. But um, I don't have too much to talk about today in this video. I'm just heading to therapy and um, I know today is gonna be a good day for me. I may go out and do some Ubering today, but I don't know. I have gas in my car. I have like a little bit under a full tank of gas. <clears throat> So I may just do that um, for a little bit, but when I do it, I don't think I could keep my phone, my video camera on as far as, you know, using the app. So I guess I'll do like maybe one trip, uh, one delivery. And um, after that, I'll just, you know, head back to the house or whatever. <clears throat> so yeah, like, uh, I'm not trying to worry about, you know, the financial situation that's going on with me because I know I will be okay. Like I said, I have like three little, well, technically I have two little gigs, but the other one, I actually have to speak to um, the woman that possibly needs services from me. So I will be, you know, reaching out to her. She was supposed to reach out to me like yesterday afternoon, but she didn't reach out. So <clears throat> I'm definitely gonna call her back, um, follow up with, um, two other clients I did work for like two months ago. I'm gonna reach out to them, see if they need anything, you know, trying to just, you know, stay busy, you know, stay elevated um, through this hard time. Um, however, I didn't take my medicine yet. I, I forgot to take my medicine this morning. So when I get back home, I would do that. So I guess before I go out and do some Ubering, I'll just stop at my house and, you know, take my psych meds. So I will be A-OK. -okay. I did get some sleep last night, thank God. You know, um, Sunday night, I didn't get not one, I didn't get a drop of sleep. I was up all, all night just, you know, doing some work for YouTube. And when I think about it, you know, YouTube is technically a job, you know? So I guess I could call this a job too because when you gotta sit here and make videos every week, every day, sometimes you gotta edit them. It's time consuming, seriously. I'd, ra I'd rather, I'd rather do this <laughs> than to work. If the if the money starts coming in with YouTube, I won't be worried about you know trying to look for work and 
you know, wasting all this gas driving around the city of Atlanta. You know, you're at risk of getting your car hit. The people out here drive terrible. The traffic is horrible. Like, man, Atlanta is something else, yo. Like, <laughs> a lot of people that come to Atlanta, they come to Atlanta because they want to, um, oh, I had to watch that car. They come to Atlanta because they see that it's so much, it's so much things going on down here, especially like if you're, if you're a black person like myself, you know, you watch TV, okay? A lot of black people that come to Atlanta, they watch, you know, these, um, these reality TV shows, you know, these talk shows, and, um, they see like the glitz and glamour of Atlanta. Um, but when you come here, especially if you don't have a job, if you don't have a job transfer and you come here, it's very difficult to get a job out here. Seriously, I've been in Atlanta most of my life. I lived in a few other states um, after I graduated from high school, but I'm originally from Connecticut. I grew up here pretty much and hell, I had a struggle getting jobs after I graduated from high school here. You know what I'm saying? Like went to college, got a fucking degree and all that shit. That shit don't mean shit, you know what I'm saying? Like people come to Atlanta and they think it's the best place in the world. I mean, it's a it's a nice it's a nice city, a nice state. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of benefits to living in Georgia as a business owner. You know, it's a lot of corporate jobs here, but it's, I'm telling you, if you have lack of skills, even if you have skills, even if you have a degree, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. There's a housing shortage out, housing shortage out here. Okay. That's another problem. And then an, another problem, which is happening throughout the U.S., is that all these corporate commercial real estate companies, they're buying up the houses and they're letting people rent them out. So basically, a lot of the homes that are like being built, like all the new developments, um, are being taken over by commercial real estate properties that just want to rent homes out it's, instead of people actually buying them and getting a mortgage loan. Like... It's sad. Then you see a lot of homeless people out here in Atlanta. And when it comes to Atlanta, it's very difficult to find certain resources for, you know, people in need. You know what I'm saying? Like, where I live at, okay, when I drive through the city, I see a lot of older people like that. A lot of older homeless people. They be out there, you know, sitting on benches. You got older people on, on scooters that don't have no legs. You know what I'm saying? They need help. But it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. So, you know, I have to continue to thank God for my blessings every day. You know what I'm saying? And like, you know, I give out resources on here that could really, you know, living in Atlanta to me, um, if you're broke, has a lot of cons. Okay. Um, and not just if you're broke, like if technically, if you don't make a lot of money, um, as you all know, inflation is causing everything to skyrocket. Um, in Atlanta, the main thing that has skyrocketed is the housing, okay? So, if you're coming down here looking for affordable housing, it's very limited, okay? Very, very limited. Um, you know, applying for like Section 8 out here is difficult, it's hard when you get the voucher because I'm going to just speak on behalf of my own experience. I know everybody that gets Section A in Georgia has different experiences, but as far as what I went through getting it, um, when I first got it a few years back when I was younger, it was easy to find housing back then, okay? And that was like around 2009, 10. I've been on Section A like off and on through my throughout my adult life. So the very last time I was on Section 8, my lease had expired. I couldn't renew it because the voucher amount wouldn't cover the amount of rent. And so I was trying to see if I could pay the difference of living there for the next, you know, um, the less leasing, you know, the leasing year. And they told me, no, I had to move. Like it was a $10 difference <laughs> and they wouldn't let me um, pay it. So, you know, like in Georgia, you have, they go by zip code. Okay. So you have to find section eight in the zip codes um that you're trying to move to and so i think it's like fucked up because with the zip codes like there's not even housing in every single zip code you know so yeah it's just it's just stupid it's really stupid how they do the section eight here and another thing is that in different counties because like i'm in the cab 
and in different counties you know they have section 8 for every single county so the metro Atlanta area has section 8 for their counties but as you go out further in Georgia there's section 8 for the whole rest of Georgia it's like one section 8 I think it's called the community of the community of affairs or something like that but anyway yeah so when you come down here and you're broke and if you're disabled it's 10 times harder to get a job um to find housing um what else to find a doctor and like if you don't get social security and like you're actually trying to like you know get disability and stuff and you're trying to find like medical services and you're disabled it's very hard to even see somebody like they have like the public uh, clinics out here because I used to go to them before I got disability. Um, there's Grady Hospital, which is a hospital that's downtown Atlanta. Um, they offer something called a Grady card. So that's a person that doesn't have insurance. Um, they could get assistance by going to uh, that hospital and seeing like different doctors and different specialists and things like that. But um, yeah, the way I used to get mental health treatment when I was younger, I would go to the community service board of the Cab County, okay? And um, yeah, there were therapists there. Um, I used to get like all types of assistance, like uh, housing assistance, um, quite a few other um, like assistances, assistances that I used to get. But um, yeah, like the assistance is out there. It's very hard to get it. And I know that like a lot of state programs in Georgia, they run out of funding for um, you know, assistance for the community, for the county, for the state. There's a lot of people here. Georgia is very overcrowded. There's more, more and more people keep coming here. And I always wonder why. <laughs> like they come here and then um, they see that it's very limited when it comes to housing, employment. I mean, you see all these cars in Georgia. You may wonder like, where are these, where the hell are these people working at? Because this place is so overpopulated. And you would think that if there's millions of people here, that they would have so many resources. I mean, there's so many wealthy people that live in Georgia, okay, and they do not help the poor. All Georgia is is a straight entertainment state. Georgia is a place where if you want to come here, you know, go to a few Braves games or, you know, football, you know, out hookah, smoking, drinking, you know, going to all these activities, all this eating all this unhealthy food at these unhealthy restaurants, then you're at the right place. You're at the right place to, you know, do that. But Georgia is one of those places where you'll come here, have fun, party. Okay, y'all. So I just got back home. My camera had cut off. But um, basically, I was saying that, you know, when you try to get help out here, what's it, what a disability in Georgia now in this same age, like I said, it's real difficult. And um, there's always a waiting list to you know, see somebody for, you know, issues, health issues and things like that if you don't have insurance. So I highly recommend if you come here with a disability, you either need to be staying with a relative or staying with somebody. Don't come down here thinking you're gonna get help right away, especially if you need public assistance. For example, like I get Medicaid through the state of Georgia and with Medicaid, it pretty much pay like the 20% of my insurance, my SSI. No, I don't get SSI, my SSDI. I get the Medicare, so I get payment through that. Then I have to pay the difference with the Medicaid. Then sometimes I still have a balance left over that I have to pay for my doctor visits, but it'd be like $20, you know, 10 bucks and stuff. But yeah, make sure you have social security before you come to Georgia. If, if you're deciding to stay here, because um, it's difficult. A lot of people, excuse me, they come to Georgia thinking everything is going to be all, <laughs> sorry. They're thinking that, um, hold on, I got to pull up my camera. Yeah, so they're thinking that it's going to be all glitz and glamour. And I guess they figure like, you know, there's a lot of people out here. So, um, you know, there's a lot of assistance. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, like a lot of companies partner with, you know, government agencies out here. And, um, you know, they help with resources, they help with housing, um, they help with homelessness and stuff. But a lot of times you won't hear about the resources that help people out here unless you, I guess, network with other people. Like, 
You could call 211, which is United Way for assistance. However, the assistance is always limited. It's just some kind of waiting list for help. And I know that people from like other states, like California, New York, um, Connecticut, New Jersey, um, what is it, Illinois, they all come down here and say it's hard to get help, okay? And yes, it is. It's very difficult to get help. Hold on one second. Oh, yeah, but like I was saying, I keep getting all these phone calls. I keep getting interrupted while I'm making this video, but yeah, the um, it's very limited for resources here. Um, being disabled at that is, is 10 times harder so, you know, if you're coming down here with a disability thinking you're just going to get all this help, just beware that you will be, you know, waiting lists and, um, you know, like it's a lot. It's a lot to live here um, with no insurance. So, you know, if you're a woman with children, it's hard for that too now. A woman with children, a father with children, you know, single dad, single mom, um, elderly at that. What else? Um, homeless people, like... It's no joke. So everybody here is like one step away from being homeless with a, with one paycheck. Well, not one. Then you have to work multiple jobs, multiple jobs just to get by. And if you have children, you have to definitely work, you know, more than one job. So yeah, like housing is hard. It's a, it's a lot to get housing out here. Like where I live, I have an affordable apartment. I don't have Section 8. And I've said it several times in other videos, but... Hell, I had to wait quite a few years to move here. <laughs> like, I almost moved out of state. Right before I was about to move out of Georgia, they called me for this apartment, okay? I had to wait for, like, six years. I applied in 2017 when I had a Section 8 pro apartment. And the Section 8, I couldn't find nothing. So, the waiting list was open for this, and I just got on it back then. So, yeah, like, there's housing out here. Like I said, I keep saying it's limited, all right? Then there's transportation issues out here. You could ride the train, but it doesn't go but too far. A lot of people need to get outside of outside the Atlanta area. Uh, there's no transit outside of Atlanta area. Like certain counties, they do have like their bus system, but it's not it's not really good. Like it sucks. It really sucks. And um, a lot of people that are you know transporting around here with no car, they're doing Uber. They're riding Ubers and Lyfts and all the other companies that provide transportation services, you know, in the Atlanta area, because you can't, you don't want to rely on the bus line or the buses and the trains because number one, like I keep saying, it don't go everywhere you, where you, where you need to go. So anyway, I just wanted to give y'all, you know, some feedback about Atlanta. Um, please do your research before you come here. Don't just watch TV. You know what I'm saying? Don't watch TV. Come down here first. Come down here and visit, <laughs> okay? Come visit, please, before you decide to move here. Another thing I do want to add is a dating. Now, people will say, oh, dating is like this in every other state in the U.S., but no, it's a different type of issue when dating in Atlanta, especially with straight people. I hear this all the time. I hear, you know, men, you know, having a hard time dating women. Women have a hard time dating men. It's a lot of married. It's like a, a lot of married women here, I think. But anyway... You know, the guys, you know, they say it's not a lot of women here to, I guess, date or maybe it's the other way around. But, you know, it's like some crazy type of dating here. You know, it's a lot of users out here, a lot of scammers. OK, even the LGBT community, it's very difficult in that community as well. You know, people be wanting to do polyamorous relationships. I see that a lot. Like I be on the dating apps, you know what I'm saying? I be on them apps and, you know, people on there is not even emotionally stable. Just like being off the dating apps, you know? It's like, I don't know. It's it's really hard to meet quality, genuine people here. I hear it all the time and it's really true. So anyway, you know, people will say, oh, that's everywhere, that's everywhere. But Atlanta, it's a different kind of, <laughs> it's a different type of environment when it comes to dating. You know, you deal with a lot of closed-minded, you know, um, you know, people here, you know, especially our people, you know, it's some, you know, black people out here, just like me. Okay. It's people that come out here thinking they're so entitled to everything. Okay. They come down here, you know, they complain, they complain about, you know, what's not here, what they can't get out of Atlanta. And then after that, they either end up moving back to their hometown because they couldn't survive here. They couldn't find a job. They couldn't find a place to live. Like, 
some people have to go through that coming here. So, you know, like I keep reiterating is that you all need to make sure y'all have y'all y'all ducks in a row before you move to Georgia. Don't come down here by yourself, especially if you're single and you don't have a job, don't come down here. If you don't have nobody to stay with that can help you until you get a job, please, 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 please listen to me. Just pay attention. Do not come to Atlanta, okay? Like I said, there's a lot of companies out here, a lot of wealthy people in Atlanta. There's a lot of wealthy people. And a lot of them don't really, they don't really give back to the community or I don't hear about them giving back. You know, I know quite a few organizations, like smaller organizations that help with resources and I will share them on this channel. You know what I'm saying? I will, I'll start sharing them once I start volunteering for some of them again. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and end this video. Um, hopefully I, I kind of broke down just the basic, the basics of living in Atlanta, broke and disabled, um, hopefully y'all could, you know, comment below and, you know, give me some feedback. Have I said everything? If I didn't just comment below, tell me about the other issues that go on in Atlanta. If you live in Atlanta, but anyway, with that being said, thanks for watching. You all have a blessed day. Bye-bye.